Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. And today I'd like to show you how to make parallel EMT bends. And it's not as hard as it looks. What the parallel EMT bends are uh, is you, you have to run like four series of wires through your pipes uh, to get someplace. And so you need to make it look nice and professional. So this is parallel EMT bending. So what I did is I started right here at this fitting. The pipe starts right here and it goes over and it, it encounters this obstacle that it has the pipes in parallel have to jump over this obstacle. And we call these kind of bends four point saddle bends. If you, if you uh, think of this as a saddle that goes on a horse, you know, you put it right there and you go over the horse, or well, I don't know how they named it, but I, there's four points. One, two, three, four. And to get them the same, you need to make these bends at the same place and these bends at the same place and so on. And the spacing has to be the same. This is two inches like on center from this pipe to this pipe to this pipe to this pipe, it's supposed to be two inches. It might be off just a little, but it's pretty close. And then we go over here, and these are all 90 degree bends. And they come up to these fittings right here. So these bends all have to be pretty much exactly 90 degrees, as you would imagine. So that's these are parallel EMT bends and let's and what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over a little bit of how you do this and then I'm going to take all this down I'm going to do it again <laughs> but it isn't that hard here's some information about these four point saddle bends right here first of all I'm making all 30 degree bends you can make them at 45 degrees but every one of the bends would have to be at 45 degrees so you can make it at 22 and a half but every one of the bends would have to be at 22 and a half so this information here is for 30 degree bends so uh, first there's shrinkage uh, it's a quarter inch per inch of obstruction times the height of obstruction so our obstruction is three inches so one quarter times three is three quarters of an inch so we're going to be figuring that in uh, to make our first mark, which will be right here. And this is the distance between the bends. That's between this bend and this bend. And it is two inches per inch of obstruction. So if we were to put a tape on the beginning of the conduit and go to right the start of the obstruction, you see we got 31 and three quarters. Now we got to add three quarters inch for our shrinkage. So our first mark will be at 32 and a half inches. Okay, and that is actually this mark right here. Okay, this is 32 and a half inches. And then you gotta measure back. This is 26 and a half inches, 32 and a half inches. And then the obstruction itself measures seven and a quarter inches so that's the distance between here and here and then once again we got six inches and i'll show you in a minute how i make the bends but that's your basics of the shrinkage and the distance between these these two bends and these two bends the distance between here and here is the distance of the obstacle these are the first four bends you make these marks on all four of your pipes 26 and a half 32 and a half 39 and three quarters 45 and three quarters so here we go it says 90 degree bend on the star so the star is right here a lot of times you make the bend on the arrow but for this purpose we'll be making the bends on the star and here's where you put your star on the bender these marks here and notice that each length is two inches longer than the next length okay so that's the way it is when you do 90 degree bends you see you got two inches on center distance between these pipes and there's an actual formula 
and it's you take half of the bend, so that'd be 45 times the tangent. Hope I'm not losing you, but the tangent of 45 degrees is one, and then times the distance between the bends, it comes out to two. When you got 90 degree bends, you just make each each one two inches longer. Okay, when making this 90 degree bend, so. That's a good reason to make 90 degree bends when you're doing parallel ENP bends. But if you made some other bend, it would be the, the same formula, just it wouldn't be so easy to do. But 90 degrees, it's just the, the distance between the pipes. You gotta make this one two inches longer than this one, and this one two inches longer than this one, and this one's two inches longer than that one. And you, you make your bend. I make it on the star. And so that's how you do that. And that's what this is all about. And the next one I've written down here is stub length. And that refers to if you put a flat edge on this, you would measure from here to the fitting. How long does this stub have to be? And you notice they get two inches longer successively. I got 30 and 5 16 32 and 5 16 34 and 5 16 36 and 5 16 so each one of these stubs has to be two inches longer than the previous one okay this one's got to be two inches longer than that one this one's gonna be two inches longer than that one that one's gonna be two inches longer than that one so you need two inches longer this way on each successive run and two inches longer this way on each successive run one thing I'd like to point out is that uh, these marks right here are all pretty much uh, centered on the obstacle. See this, these are made at seven and a quarter inches apart, which is the uh, distance from here to here. So that's one thing you want to look for as these bends each being like centered on the obstacle. So to make our 30 degree bends of the four point saddle bend, uh, we, get, we need to make these marks here. This is 26 and a half. That's 32 and a half. This is 39 and three quarters, and this is 45 and three quarters. You see, you have uh, they're all the same marks because we want to end up with the same bends. I'm going to start by bending these four 30 degree bends with the pipes on the ground, and I'm going to use the hook of the bender facing the middle of these four bends. Then I'm going to turn the bender head around and so that the hook is still facing towards the middle of the four bends. And I'm going to make 30 degree bends again on the ground. Here I'm making the first 30 degree bend on the first pipe. And I'm gonna check my little digital level. And it says I need a couple more degrees and just, just a little bit. And so that's our first 30 degree bend. Here's the second 30 degree bend on the second pipe. Here's our third 30 degree bend on our third pipe. This one needs just a little bit more. Here's our fourth 30 degree bend on the fourth pipe. Now back to the first pipe again. Once again, I'll be making a 30 degree bend on the ground. Now I have to align the handle of the bender with the pipe. It's imperative that you get them lined up or you'll get something called the dog leg, which is a crooked bend. So I'm sighting down the handle towards the pipe. And now I'm going to make a 30 degree bend. I'm gonna check my little digital level and give it another touch. Now I'm making the second 30 degree bend on the second pipe. I'm aligning the handle and the pipe and getting them nice and straight and here's a 30 degree bend. Here I'm making the same 30 degree bend on the third conduit. And once again, you have to get the handle aligned with the pipe. And I have my little digital level there and there's a 30 degree bend. Here's the fourth conduit. So this will be the last bend that I make on the ground. 
and I'm making sure that the arrow is right on the line. That's an important point as well. The arrow's got to be right on the line and the hook is facing the middle of these pins. And now align the handle with the pipe and there's your 30 degree bend. I check my little digital level and give them their little touch. There it is. Here's the four conduits so far. Next, I'll be making four 30 degree bends in the air, not on the ground, right here where the arrow is pointing to these pencil marks. And I'll be making four 30 degree bends where the arrow is pointing to these pencil marks. Here I am making the first of the 30 degree bends in the air. Once again, it's necessary to sight down the pipe and align it. And here I've bent it to 30 degrees. I'm going to take it off the bender and turn it around and put it back in the bender with the hook facing the middle of the bends. Once again, you have to align the pipes and make sure your arrow's right on the mark. And there it is. Be sure to sight down the pipe to check for dog legs. Here I'm working on the second pipe. And after sighting down the line, there's a 30 degree bend made in that piece of conduit. Now turn the pipe around and put it in the bender. The hook. Uh, once again is pointing towards the middle and get it aligned and sighted and here we go there's your 30 degree bend here's the fourth conduit I have my boot bracing the handle of the bender when bending the conduit okay now I'm flipping this conduit around uh, putting the bender on it. And here's the last 30 degree bend. Here's what the four pipes look like now. Now I'll consult my notes. We need a 90 degree bend on the star at 68 and 7 sixteenths. And the stub length needs to be 30 and 5 sixteenths. Now I'll measure out 68 and 7 16 inches on the conduit. Then I'm going to make a 90 degree bend on the star of the bender head. Now I'll check that the bend is right on 90 degrees. Now I'll cut the stub at 30 and 5 16 from the back of the bend. And after I've cut the conduit, I'll ream it with my reamer. Now I'll install the first conduit, taking care to getting it level and plumb and to getting the four point saddle bend centered on the obstruction. Now checking my notes again, we see the second conduit's measurements are 70 and 7 sixteenths and 32 and 5 sixteenths. And notice both of these measurements are two inches greater than the previous conduit's measurements. Now I'll mark the second conduit at 70 and 7 16 inches and then I'll make a 90 degree bend bent on the star of the bender head and I'll cut it at 32 and 5 16 from the back of the bend. And then I'll ream out the conduit. Then I'll install the second conduit, taking care to getting it level and plumb and getting it centered over the obstruction. Now I'll use the third set of numbers for the third conduit. And I'll use the same procedure that I did for the first two conduits. And one tip is make sure those 90 degree bends are really 90 degrees. And then I'll install the conduit. Now I'll use the fourth set of figures and I'll do the same procedure on the fourth conduit. And then once it's ready to go, you'll install the fourth conduit. Then once I have all four conduits installed, I'll use two sets of four 
one hole straps to strap or clamp the conduit to the wall. And when you do the strapping, make sure that you have the two inch spacing uh, between your conduits. So you can fix little imperfections with your spacing in, in that way using the straps. When you're finished, clean off your pencil marks. In conclusion, what I have to say about parallel EMT bending is you can do it. And uh, I'll put links in my video description for the ideal benders. Uh, this is my preference in benders. Uh, this is the aluminum head and this is the ductile iron head. Uh, these are uh, heavier, but they're more durable. Uh, these are lighter and I like them because I can read the numbers better. <laughs> Also, I'll put links for the, the Klein Reamer. It's a really nice tool. And uh, Klein just came out with uh, uh, these insulated drivers. And you just turn it and it comes out and you switch it around. Uh, this is the, right here is the number two square. You use that a lot. Uh, like these fittings right here, they're, they're number two square. So I'll put a link for a, a set of these or and also for individual uh, fully 1000 volt insulated. Okay, this is an, an ideal bender boot. I really don't like them, but they're great. If you, if you have to work on a surface, so you just put it on like that. If, if you have to work on a surface where you can't be uh, scratching up the floor, uh, use one of these, they're great. They're great for that. I, other than that, I don't really like them. Okay, I'll put links for the Klein benders as well. If you prefer the Klein benders, uh, both in ductile iron and in aluminum. And the bender boot fits on these too. Okay, this is the Klein lighted level. It's really neat. You can see from there, probably I'm, I'm level right here. So that's, that's a neat, that's a, it's a nine inch level. So that's real cool. And I'll put a link for the, uh, the new Klein tape measure that has the conduit bending tables on the, one, on the back there. So it, it gives you all the multiples and shrink factors. I'll put a, a link for these hard hats. These are made by Klein. Look how, look how much padding's in them. These are the most comfortable hard hats I've ever worn. Uh, and I'll uh, put them in the brim style that I prefer and the cap style. And I'll put a link for this little digital level. These are really cool. When you're bending and so forth, if you want to make sure you got just the right degree of bend, uh, these are lightweight, they're magnetic, and they work really good. So, thanks, I hope this was helpful. In conclusion, what I have to say about parallel EMT bending is you can do it. So uh, I'll put links in my video description uh, for the ideal benders. <laughs>